I love the way you set up your planner. Um, is it is my first time using one and it's possible would you go over your last year's planners and I love your idea. Hey you guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I'm going to change it up and do something a little bit different. I am going to be answering all of my unanswered comments that I have here on my YouTube channel. You guys, I am so happy for all of you new subscribers that have subscribed to my channel. I really feel grateful for, um, I guess, my little platform here on YouTube growing and I'm so happy for all of my new subscribers and my new viewers. I really appreciate all of you guys. And um, in attempts to remedy me not answering all of my YouTube comments, I gather all of my most commonly asked questions and I put it together and I'm going to answer all of those questions today for you guys. I am going to try my best to be better at answering all of my comments on my YouTube channel. It's really hard, you guys, just because um, when I get a more deeper question or a more elaborate question it really takes time for me to like really think and make sure I you know answer the question thoroughly and a lot of times I always say oh I'm gonna come back and answer that question later and I never come back to it so I'm gonna do my best in attempt to answer all of my unanswered YouTube comments and if you guys like this type of video I definitely will make more for you guys and I'm gonna do a lot better at answering all of you guys's questions or at least as many as I can so you guys, the first most common question I always receive on my YouTube channel is um, this one right here, which is, do you have any videos or guidance on how to create a schedule for your preschooler? How does a typical day go for you with your youngest? And I definitely will say I do not have any videos on my channel as far as scheduling tips for preschoolers, um, but I will direct you to my friend Rachel from 7 and All. She has two young boys that she is homeschooling now. I believe they are three and five. They are um, similar ages as my younger ones here. And I got a lot of tips and guidance in helping me create schedules and routines from her video. Another one, you guys, who is a big uh, YouTuber here on this platform is JDA. And she really specializes in that like preschool, kindergarten uh, routines and things like that. And I definitely love watching her video for tips in like creating my schedule and routine with my younger two. I'm not gonna lie, it took me a long time to really get them in the flow of homeschool uh, because I was really inconsistent with them. And over the summer, you guys, I really put my foot down and I began to be um, really consistent with them in their schedule so they understood and they knew, uh, you know, their morning time. This is a time we eat breakfast and do Bible. This is a time we're reading. This is school time. This is outside time. So I really had to be consistent in our rhythms in our home. Uh, and it really made, I guess, squeeze and that educational time with them a lot easier. So um, I definitely will um, link some of my favorite videos from Rachel from 7 and All and from JDA that I loved um, that helped me incorporate some type of schedule and routine for my younger ones. My next question that I have is uh, from Jennifer Wilson 9195 and she asked me, um, how do you like math with confidence? I'm considering it for my youngest when she's old enough for kindergarten work. And I have been receiving even so many questions you guys about math with confidence or in particular kindergarten math with confidence and you know how I am enjoying this uh, program right here with Leia. So um, we started kindergarten math with confidence in January. I wasn't consistent with this program so in the summer I, com I completely started it over from the beginning and right now we are on week nine. I definitely will say I absolutely I you know I love this program and I really don't want to speak too soon especially since I'm still kind of like in the beginning part of it but I really have been enjoying it. I've been enjoying the games, the hands-on activities. I will say some of the warm-up exercises that they have in the beginning, the ones that take a little bit longer, like uh, we have been playing goldfish and things like that. Sometimes I separate the lesson where we will play like goldfish uh, during like our um, afternoon time, whenever we have downtime, and then I focus on the meat of the lesson. So sometimes I break up the warm-up section from the actual lesson. That's a way like I try to keep my daughter's attention focused because sometimes 
sometimes I feel like the warm-ups and the lesson practice may feel a little bit scattered. Um, so that's something that I have been doing and really shaking it up and it's really been fun. Uh, something else I definitely will say about Kindergarten Math with Confidence if you are going into this program, just know it does take some prep work. Uh, what I do at the beginning of the week is I make sure I have all the supplies and the materials that I need for the whole week and I put it in like my little cubby. Um, so I can ensure when I am sitting down doing lessons with Leia, I have everything I need, whether it recalls like straws or I need a construction uh, paper, whatever I need. It's typically something I do have in the home, but I do make sure I uh, look ahead and I plan. I love that this is scripted and you know, it's really been so much fun. Um, as far as this with, um, what is it? Kindergarten, not kindergarten, but as far as this program with Matthew C. Primer, because we are doing both math programs, if anyone was to ask me which one do I love better, there are both two completely separate programs and I love them both. And I really can't say one is better than the other, but I really have been enjoying both of our math curriculums this homeschooling year so far. I really been enjoying also to the picture book. So last week our picture book was this one right here, which is Seeing Symmetry. Now uh, this was a replacement book because I think the book that they recommended, it wasn't in stock in my library. So I went ahead and I grabbed this book because it was really similar. And I really loved how uh, since we were talking about symmetry, uh, my daughter had an opportunity to read like a picture book that really went in depth in explaining what symmetry is. And um, I love the incorporation of the math books. And even though this um, is like an enrichment exercise that you can do on Fridays with Kindergarten Math with Confidence, I read the picture book all week long. And I really, really love that. So our next couple of picture books we're going to be using for the next couple of weeks is going to be Left, Right, Emma, which we're of course going over left and right. And these books are so stinking cute. And then after that, we're going to be using this book right here, which is called Pattern Fish. And um, I love like all of the illustrations. All of the books have been really, really hits in my homeschool so far. So I just make sure I at least have like three weeks worth of books on hand um, for the Kindergarten Math with Confidence because I didn't want to purchase all the books, but um, they definitely add like a little oomph into the program. So I really, really have been enjoying it. So you guys, the next question that um, I received is, um, I love the way you set up your planner. Um, is it is my first time using one and it's possible would you go over your last year's planners and I love your idea. So you guys, um, over the past couple of years, I have been using School Nest's homeschool planners and this right here is my big uh, School Nest homeschool planner that I used last year and then I have my new one that I'm using this year which is my homeschool minimalist planner from School Nest. So you guys, I am going to flip you around and I'm going to show you guys the inside of both of the planners and how this one looks and compared to this one right here. Um, I am going to kind of give you guys some glimpses of what we've been up to in our homeschool. Um, don't worry, I will give you guys our um, August homeschooling update next week and you'll kind of know like all the nitty gritty things that we have done, but you will see some sneak peeks when I show you guys inside of uh, both of these planners and the layouts and the differences really, really quick. So um, I absolutely love school nest uh, planners. Um, I'm not going to lie. I do miss my bigger one because I miss all of the pages that I have, but this one is working out just fine. But I think next year I may go for the bigger, uh, the bigger one again. So these are my school nest planners and I'm going to flip you guys around and show you the inside of them. Okay, you guys, these are actually my two planners. This is my planner from last year and my new one from this year. The only difference is, is that I actually uh, took off the binding myself and I laminated the front cover of this uh, School Nest Minimal, Minimal Planner because it actually doesn't come like this. All of the planners come like this with the, I don't know, there's just a regular binding on the side. And this is how my um, planner looks after like a year of wear and tear. So I really feel like it held up pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how this planner looks right here since I have another video showing you guys the setup already of this one. So this is last year's planner. This is just the big bad boy in the lesson planning. So this is my first page of my planner. I still didn't fill out my index. <laughs> um, this right here has our schedule and our yearly overview, all the days that we took off. Um, I have our attendance record, the curriculum that we used last year, and I even marked like if we finished it or not. Um, I have all of the resources that we've used. 
So this is uh, history science. This is all the things that I use for my pre k -er at the time. I have our uh, field trips, which you guys, <laughs> I don't think we did any field trips last year. And you know, it is what it is. We have different seasons for things. So uh, yeah, that is my field trips calendar that I attempted to do. Here is the books that we read. And um, I have all the little pictures in here. I didn't complete it and do all of them. I kind of got fatigued towards the end, but it's okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do you guys is I'm gonna pull out a week and show you guys how a week of my lesson planning looked here. So here is my reflections page where I would take a picture of either me working like with the kids. So um, here, I'm gonna zoom you guys in. So right here, I have a picture of my oldest doing her science and doing math. And then I have a picture right here of me working with my four year old at the time she was four on her um, Matthew C right here. And then I have a picture of all of her crafts that she got up to in her all about reading pre reading. This right here was a schedule that I typed out for um, how we were doing like our weekly days. So I will always glue it in on here. And if it was anything I wanted to write in or fill out, I would. Here is actually how our whole week would look. So uh, I, I would reverse plan. So in starting off our week, I will only write like the subjects and the dates across. And then as we go throughout the course of the week, I will go ahead and fill it in. And then I love this planner right here is because it had these daily detail pages. And what I used them for was to write out specific things that my kiddos was working on, things that I wanted to uh, incorporate for the next week, uh, areas that I thought that they did really, really well in. And I really loved incorporating these daily detail pages because it was really notes and reminders for me as I was going into the next weeks. And then my weeks will kind of go off the same. And here goes another week I tagged to show you guys. So here is another week. This is a week where uh, my oldest finished IEW. We were so proud of her. And um, again, here goes our week overview. So not all of the weeks will be completely full, which is completely fine. I mean, I feel like that is homeschooling. Some weeks are busier than others. So this is how this week looked. And again, here goes my daily detail pages where I like to write the details of what all the kids got up to. And then here is my, you know, next month. And this was our last month of the year. So that is how this planner looked for last year. Now here is my school nest planner. Oh, you guys, excuse the table. I didn't clean it off. This is our homeschool table, but it's all good. <laughs> Um, here is my homeschooling planner uh, and how it looks right now. I'm going to give you guys a brief flip through again. So um, here is my first page of my new School Nest Minimal Planner. My index page is, of course, still not filled out yet. I have our uh, overview of our curriculum, the lessons in each one and how I plan to attack them. I have my uh, calendar for the school year and all of the field trips that I wanna do. Right here, I actually took a picture of the field trip and I plugged it in on this page right here. Here is our attendance record. So here is all the days that I highlighted that we have done so far this homeschooling year. Here is our um, classes that my oldest is taking. And then here is the curriculum overview pages for uh, all of the kiddos. Here is the pages. I haven't started these of the book list that we've read. I think I just started my kindergartner's books. I'm only gonna put her favorite books right here. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and write out the book list. So when we end off our first six week term, I'm gonna come back in my planner and actually write out all the books. But these so far were her two favorite this homeschooling year. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to our uh, August month overview. So here is my month overview at a glance and I have different things and schedules that I have going on so far for the month. Um, here is my month in review. So I will come back to this page after we complete the month of August. So here, let's go to my weekly layout. So here is our first day of school pictures. Here is like my weekly goals for the week and any type of things that I have I wanna do in the calendar I put there. So this is our first week back at school. I highlighted some of their favorite books, our hymn study. And um, here is our second week back at school, my goals and plans, some of my um, kindergartner's favorite books for that week. And again, um, this is everything that we did for that week. So I reverse plan. So the only thing I will have out at the beginning of the week is the subject and the days of the week. And then I will fill it in as we go. And what I've been doing is taking this last column and using it as a note section. So 
Here is our third week back at school. Uh, again, some more, a book I had to reread <laughs> for my kindergartner that she enjoyed. One of my daughter's favorite books she enjoyed. And again, this week was a slower week for us. So um, these are the goals that I had for us to do on our third week. And a new um, independent read my daughter read that week. Notes. Here is our week four. What we got up to, my weekly reflections, goals, books that my kiddos read. We had our homeschool hangout and they talked about pollinators, which was really, really fun. Uh, here is like some of the books that the kiddos enjoy, a new read aloud. And then right here is our next week that is coming up, which is uh, week five. And I have my goals that I did already. And then right here, this is how my calendar actually, or my um, planner actually looks for that week where I just write out everything that I plan to do. And then as we go through each day, I will fill it out. So now I have my notes and then I have my morning time right here. On the side, I have math, English, literature, history, and science for my oldest. For my younger two, my kindergartner and my preschooler, I have them right here at the bottom because my oldest kind of takes up most of the planner for right now. So this is how my planner is looking right now, you guys. So I gave you a sneak peek and I can't wait to talk to you guys about my August update and all the things we got up to in my next upcoming video. Okay, you guys. Another most common question I get is how do I create the small little pictures that I put inside of my planner? So for the most part, how I create those pictures is I go on to Amazon and I type in whatever book that I am looking to make a small picture or replica to put in my planner. And uh, the main keys that I press because I am using a uh, Mac or um, iOS, I press Command Shift 4 to take a small screenshot of of that particular book that I'm looking for. Um, and that is how I, I guess, get the right size that I want. So typically I don't resize the image. I just use that little image that it has on Amazon. So at that point, then what I would do is I go to whatever like word processor that you like to use. I like to use Google Documents because it's completely free. It reminds me a lot of Microsoft Word. And what I do is I take my screenshot and I just drag it onto my new Word document. And that that is how I save all of the pictures that I want to add in my planner and I simply print them out at my glue and washi tape. Hey you guys, my next question that I have is, I have been binge watching your content this week, so I'm so glad I found you. I have three kids, 11, five, and three in the same grade as yours. Um, I like to know what resources you plan to use, what methods you are planning for study hall uh, time with your sixth grader, since this is something now I would love to work with mine as well over the years. So for right now, as far as our study hall period for my sixth grader, the main thing that I'm working on right now is note taking skills. So uh, because we did IEW structure and style last year for uh, my sixth grader, we are following a similar model as far as taking notes and writing and citing sources and writing them in her own words. So that is the main thing that we're working on right now. I really wanted her to get used to doing some type of note taking skills as far as like core nail notes and we've really been focusing on that and that is the only skill I have been working on right now but for my study hall period again it's really going to be helping my um, my daughter learn how to do note taking skills and study skills because as she is getting further and further in her academics I do want her to have the confidence in being able to consume information and be able to write notes on her own because I definitely know because she is on a college path here uh, in our homeschool I definitely want her to be able to have that skill mastered as she is entering high school because I do plan for her to do dual enrollment classes. So right now that is our only focus in our study hall period, but I definitely know we can use it for a variety of different things. But right now we are working on note taking skills and in her Oak Meadows curriculum, she's working on citing sources right now. So that's really, really cool. And I really have been helping her do that. Um, she's been citing her uh, sources right now in MLA format. However, I do want to teach her how to do other formats formats and citing sources as well. So you guys, my uh, next question is, um, I love this video and I admire the dedication and the progress in your homeschool, kudos. 
Thank you so much. And it says, any chance can you elaborate on the use for your science notebooks? So you guys, I am gonna flip you guys around. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek inside of our old school nest science notebooks. And I may even give you a sneak peek of our history science notebooks. So you can kind of see some of the inspiration and ideas that I get when I am doing like some type of interactive notebook for my kiddos. Okay, you guys, here is our school nest notebooks from last year. This is the history one we used and the science one. And I'm gonna briefly show you guys um, some of the pages that my daughter did last year. This is her chart that she charted the weather um, when we was going over our weather unit. Uh, she really, really enjoyed that. Um, so honestly, when it comes to notebooking in their science journals, to really be honest, um, I kind of just go with the flow so if the curriculum told us to look up vocabulary words I may look up vocabulary words and have my kiddos find pictures that they enjoy so this year of course we were studying space um, so that is kind of like how this notebook started as far as science goes um, any types of prompts that my curriculum does tell me to do that's typically what I would do and if I find like any free interactive notebooking pages that I like on teachers pay teachers that's definitely like an opportunity that I will use to like add in different notebooking pages within our like science notebook. Um, this page right here um, was when we went over like the layers of the earth and most of these templates like I say I do find on teachers pay teachers whatever we are studying. So this one was my daughter's absolute favorite was when she had an opportunity to write out um, little facts and information about each of the planets and she really really loved um, doing this uh, simple um, activity when it came to science and I really loved it because I was able to see how fluid she was when it came to like her some more structured writing since she was working on IEW at the time. Um, here is like a space exploration timeline when we got to that and uh, layers of the atmosphere uh, once we got into more of the earth. So this is just examples of how her school nest science notebook looked and again I typically uh, pick off interactive things from Teachers Pay Teachers and a lot of free uh, resources is on there, especially when it comes to interactive notebooks. Here is history and it kind of looks the same uh, in starting off. Um, typically what I do is like this uh, book, this was a picture book that we were reading. I would typically find a passage or copywork passage that I really felt that uh, stood out in that book. And I might have my daughter write it out and we may add some pictures. Um, other times I may have her like write a timeline um, right here. She redid the uh, poetry and she wrote the copy work of I Too Am America. Um, I think she also in here um, right here. This is a picture or a little map that she made when we went over uh, the middle passage and she wrote about it right here. The triangular trait. So um, it just really depends. Like right here. She just wrote a quote on Booker T. Washington. So to really be honest, um, each of the pages when it comes to the notebooking, it just really depends on whether I want her to write a summary, whether we're going to do a copy work passage, uh, whether we're going to write a quote, we're going to, you know, find pictures about that person. Uh, I just really leave our notebooking really, really open and fluid. And I really allow um, my daughter to really have fun. And she really, really enjoys notebooking. So that is how I utilize my science and my history notebooks. And these are the ones from last year. Don't worry, you guys, in my update video, um, my daughter gave me the permission to share with you guys her notebooking that she has done for this year so far as well. So you guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope that I have answered all of you guys' most commonly asked comments and questions. If you guys have any more questions for me, please leave them down below in the comment section. And I definitely will make more videos like this if you have enjoyed them. I really enjoy creating this video and I really feel like this is my apology to all of you guys for not getting back to all of your guys' questions um, here on my channel. So as always, you guys, thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one. Bye.